viewers you are watching hot talk and today our guest is professor dr shahid monu chairman punjab higher education commission uh welcome to the show dr sir thank you very much are you ready for hot talk <laughs> of course i am ready when you join as a chairman higher education commission 16 june 2020 so what were the challenges for you uh some are, some of the challenges are number one is the capacity building of the commission and uh, second challenge was to improve the uh, standard of higher education and then to bring a change uh, in the higher education system uh, to transform the theoretical research into applied research uh, to bring a paradigm shift in uh, higher education uh, this was a challenge for me because uh, uh, most of the universities are engaged in a theoretical research uh, that is not being carried out on the problems of the pakistani industry and the business organizations so it was very imperative to to bridge this gap and to bring the industry and university together on the same pages and to conduct the research on the issues of the pakistani industry and business uh, for that very purpose uh, i started uh, uh, to work and uh, i gathered all the vice chancellors of the university of punjab in mari for 3 days conference a paradigm shift in higher education uh, a hackathon uh, so we deliberated on this issue that uh, in future uh, how the society is going to be transformed how the world economy is going to be transformed in the light of the world economic forum reports and all the reports were agreed that the in the future the artificial intelligence uh, the industrial robotics the data sciences and then the uh, biotechnology uh, are the major areas in which uh, the research uh, will be focused and the european universities and the american universities are, are, are already conducting research they are developing the super intelligent robots uh they are developing uh, they are dealing with the issues of water scarcity the climate change and at the end of the uh, conf- uh the conference uh, we established the seven consortia and uh, they are working on the different issues of the climate change women empowerment water scarcity energy and and, and so many areas of the robotics etc uh the purpose is to uh to formulate the policies policy recommendations uh, that will be uh, uh, transmitted to the uh, to the chief minister office and the governor office uh, and secondly we conducted the expos uh, to showcase the research uh, conducted in the pakistani and the punjab universities uh, so that the industry industrialists uh, they can visit the expo and they can contact with the uh, the researchers uh, similarly we are um conducting the training sessions for the director orex and the quality enhancement cell directors so that the universities can commercialize uh, their research properly uh, moreover we are persuading the universities to conduct the thesis fair so that the people from industry and the business they can uh, allocate the research topics to the uh, stu- to the students uh, and that research uh, can be uploaded on the web portals of the chamber of commerce so in this way we want to bridge the gap uh, between the industry and academia uh, we want that the universities should uh, include the industrial professionals in their board of studies as well so that the curriculum uh, can be developed according to the the needs of the market mr chairman what is the role of uh, universities research for policy making Uh, at the moment uh, very little research uh, we uh, our universities took part in the formulation of vision 2025 and uh, we have uh, presented concept papers and road maps in that vision for instance for energy pakistan energy policy strategy i uh, wrote a complete uh, um, energy policy strategy and that that was integrated in that vision as well and in the many uh, academicians they took part in it um, but i think that the uh, the 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 participation of the academia in the policy formation is very limited uh, it 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 would be increased with the passage of time uh, at the moment we have uh, a shortage of uh, phd faculty in our universities if you look at the 
PhD uh, faculty versus student ratios. In many universities, that ratio is 1 into 80. Uh, whereas if you look at the Cambridge University or the Oxford or the Harvard, you will find that for every four students, they have a one PhD faculty member. So this, this is a huge gap. Uh, at the first step, we are trying to, uh, uh, to attain 20, uh, for every 20 students, one PhD teachers in the engineering and the scientific fields. And for every 30 students, uh, one PhD faculty in the discipline of science, social sciences. So we are striving for that. Uh, once it is achieved, then we will move forward for, 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 for to strengthen the, this ratio. Similarly, in our universities, are mainly dealing in our universities are mainly dealing with the undergrads. So the undergrads cannot create any knowledge. Uh, for that, we need to increase the postgraduates, the postgrad grad, uh, programs, and the postgrad students. And to initiate the postgrad students, the HEC requirements are for that you must have an uh, appropriate number of PhD faculty. So that is uh, lacking in the universities. And then the uh, quality of the PhDs that are coming from the China and the Malaysia and the other countries is also uh, questionable. All the PhDs uh, uh, do not have a similar standard or the same standard. Because I have been the chairman of the selection board in the University of Chiang and the uh, member of the selection board in other universities and now I am also participating in these meetings of the syndicates and the board of governors in various universities and everywhere the situation is same. So every university is hungry to recruit good PhDs for the faculty uh, so that they can uh, disseminate and impart uh, the knowledge to their students. So we are lacking currently in, in this dimension for that very purpose the federal HEC, provincial HEC, the Punjab government, Punjab Education and Endowment Fund all are trying hard and providing resources uh, to the faculty to get their uh, PhD uh, degrees from the top 100 universities of the world. So we are hopeful that when they, when they will resume their uh, positions, uh, this component will be strengthened and the research output and the policy making uh, participation will increase. What is accountability mechanism for PHEC? Uh, we are uh, account for, for financial accountability, the Auditor General of Pakistan, every year they uh, conduct the audit of the BHEC. Uh, for uh, controlling authority is the Chief Minister of the Punjab uh, and uh, we are answerable uh, for, for every... Uh, <coughs> sorry, that's <coughs> okay. start So we are answerable for every... Uh, that's uh, very step. Another important function of the PHEC is uh, the preparation of the feasibility studies for the uh, new uh, universities in Punjab and similarly for the private universities that want to get the charter. So we uh, um, uh, make sure that the, uh, the according to the Punjab government uh, uh, 2006 policy all the parameters uh, have been met uh, and then we, we forward the case to the HED and the Provincial Assembly for the Charter as well. How much PHC focusing to create opportunities for the PhD holders? Yes, there are schemes but I could not get a funding yet. Uh, one of the schemes is that the, uh, the scholars that uh, have gone abroad on uh, uh, PEEF uh, scholarships, when they, uh, when they return we want to uh, provide them an opportunity for, on uh, interim placement for one year in the universities in the Punjab. Uh, and the, uh, the secondly, uh, being uh, our representation in the, in the syndicate, we make sure that the, all the uh, recruitments are being made on merit. Uh, I think that the, for a good PhD, uh, there is uh, no limitation. Uh, more than one university are eager to recruit such person having a specialized knowledge. Uh, I think for a good PhD, there is no shortage of jobs. Mr. Chairman, where do you see PhDs when you would complete your tenure? I think the uh, PhD will be a, a much better place uh, after four years of my tenure. Uh, we are going to start our recruitment policy. We have formulated a recruitment policy that will be approved by the commission and then we, we will recruit the uh, different DGs and the directors uh, on a competitive process basis. So uh, similarly, we have launched uh, a proposal to the government of Punjab for acquiring a land for the own building of the PHEC and a training academy for the, PH, uh, the PHEC. 
So capacity building uh, of the PHEC is very much imperative in this regard. Secondly, uh, the many we want to increase the funding of the PhDs and the postdoctorate and the foreign trainings and the conferences uh, for the faculty. Thirdly, we want to uh, increase the uh, the teachers training program uh, for the colleges and for the universities. Fourthly, uh, we want to complete the capacity building. Build okay. Capacity building, and then mm. we want to. Uh, we are in the process of uh, making a, improving the curriculum of the associate degree program as well. And secondly, uh, we are in the process of formulating our app uh, that the every student in the Punjab should apply through that app uh, in every university. The purpose is to get the data that the, uh, the how many students are going into which discipline and in which demogra demographic area, in which area, uh, the which degree is the hot degree. So that on the basis of that, that data, we can suggest the government that the in which area or in, in, in which discipline the universities should, uh, new universities should be established. So uh, the data generation, uh, the data utilization, uh, the, for better planning, for better uh, uh, policy making, uh, I think the, uh, the central data bank is very, very important that we have initiated a program with the support of the BIDB as well. So when I leave uh, after four years, the PHEC will be a very vibrant voice in policy making, uh, in curriculum development and in training uh, imparting uh, in the universities in the Punjab and the colleges inshallah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, are you satisfied with the quality education and secondly, all those programs which you feel, PHC feel, there is no scope or no need in future, that must be stopped? Uh, no one can be satisfied completely. Uh, if you get satisfaction, then you cannot progress. So definitely we are not satisfied and we want to achieve the uh, heights in every program. Uh, as far as your second part of your question is concerned, that the, those programs that, that are not generating money should be stopped. Uh, we are not in that favor because if you look at the in universities, uh, the Punjabi department cannot give you uh, money. Uh, the philosophy department cannot uh, provide you a good money. Uh, Kashmiri art department cannot uh, provide you money. Uh, but these uh, programs are very much essential uh, for the character building, for uh, for well shaping up a society, mm -hmm. uh, their role is uh, enormous and alive the uh, literature. Uh, literature. Mm -hmm. So uh, the uh, everything is not done for the for the finances only, for the money generation. So it is uh, very much imperative for the human resource development in different disciplines for the creation of new knowledge because the uh, now the knowledge uh, there are no boundaries for for the disciplines. Now the interdisciplinary research is very very important. Maybe the philosophy can be uh, linked with the with the human resource development, with the psychology, and the other branches of uh, of science and arts. So I think uh, those programs cannot be stopped. And what are your three priorities? Number one is the uh, to bring a paradigm shift from the uh, theoretical research to the applied research. Number two is the capacity building of uh, higher education and number three is to uh, to provide a comprehensive quality assurance system to the universities of the Punjab. Uh, thank you so much Mr. Chairman. Our program hot talk but the answers were very soft and very prompt. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Viewers, uh, uh, I would like to say uh, goodbye and we would see you in the next program hot talk with the different guests.